Hello and welcome to the first installment of my beginner's guide to building realistic cities in City Skylines 2. I plan for this to be a series with more episodes, but for this kickoff we are gonna focus on the basics of starting a realistic city. This includes placing and planning your city's downtown or central business district, developing your city's industrial core, in this case as a big port, mapping out initial road layouts, central avenues, arterials and connectors, adding simple but effective detailing to your city services, creating low-income inner-city neighborhoods, and creating your city's first suburban developments, and probably a few more things. Do note that by focusing on realism, we will develop things in a way that is not necessarily the best in terms of modern urban planning principles, or the best financially for that matter, because real life cities are not perfect, they are full of flaws, structural issues and problems that can often be traced back hundreds of years to earlier decisions. Now the good thing is that early on, City Skylines 2 is actually quite forgiving in terms of your city's finances, so you can actually roleplay the mayor of a realistic city with realistic issues without going bankrupt. <laughs> Now your first big decision is of course going to be choosing a map. Um, now when you unlock tiles, playable tiles in the game, you can terraform pretty extensively. So you don't have to see this as a super locked choice because you can change them quite a bit fortunately. And generally I don't feel you can pick something wrong here as all these maps that ship with the game are actually quite enjoyable. There are a few things to be aware of though. One is that the theme that's indicated here, you can pretty much ignore that because you can build with, you know, you can build an, a European and North American themed city on any map you want. So this is not really of much interest. The climate and latitude though is something you might want to consider. If for instance you want to build a Canadian city where there's a possibility of snow or maybe you even want a guarantee of snow uh, during each winter cycle, you know, pick an Northern Hemisphere map with a wide temperature range in the climate. Also do keep in mind that two of the maps we have available, Lakeland and Mountain Village, do not have ship connections to other cities. So you can still roleplay that you have, you know, river ports, for instance, which is what I do in one of my cities, but you won't have actual ship traffic. So that's that's something to keep in mind at least. You can also uh, look into the natural resources. So for instance, if you create a story for your city that it's, you know, it grew up uh, in an area with very nice rural farmland, very rich soil, then going for a map, for instance, the waterway pass, which has a lot of fertile land, might be what you want. In our particular case, we're going to pick Barrier Island. It's a North American theme, which once again doesn't really matter. It has a pretty warm climate being in the Southern Hemisphere and it has a, a bit of everything really and a nice buildable area, but the island also kind of creates some natural boundaries that help me segment the city uh, a little easier. So we'll hit select map. Now for these options here, uh, to build a realistic city, uh, you could choose to unlock everything because I mean, if you're a mayor and you want to build uh, an international airport in a city of 200 farmers and bankrupt the whole thing, I mean, then you should be able to do that, right? It's your decision. Um, I don't wanna uh, unlock all because I actually find that the progression system here in City Skylines 2 is pretty enjoyable so we're gonna keep it and of course we won't use unlimited money either because that's also gonna really you know take some fun and some management aspects out of the game. Now uh, just a quick little tip on performance uh, as of the recording of this uh, video uh, performance in the game isn't all that great the developers have stated that they are dedicated to improving it and they've also provided uh, a few tricks or uh, small tweaks you can do to your graphics settings to vastly improve performance. And the best one I've found is to lower the level of detail. So I've gone from high to low and the actual results uh, in like the graphics fidelity and quality is almost unnoticeable but it pretty much gives 15 extra fps so i highly recommend you uh, you tweak this setting a bit 
Now the first thing I like to do, which might be a little odd, is actually naming the city because I find that that can actually help me set the mood for how I want to develop the city as well. What's the history, like the backstory of the place? And we know we're in the southern hemisphere and we've got lots of water. Uh, we've got what looks to be a fantastic natural harbor here uh, in this big inlet and we've got a ton of ship traffic. So uh, through my amazing creativity i'm thinking southport yeah uh very creative but it helps sets the tone for everything before we do anything we of course have to fix up our utilities to ensure that we have electricity that we have clean water and uh sewage um what's it called poop dispensing so for electricity, things have been simplified a bit. We've got a bunch of options in the base game, uh, but to just get started, I prefer using the transformer station to allow us to import power from our neighboring uh, cities. And what we can do is we can pretty much just align it over here and it's automatically going to connect like so and draw in the power from this power line. Which means we can remove these and we can go in and grab the electric cable we can hit page down to go to underground mode and then we can just connect it to the road so roads now carry electric cables but of course they also carry water which is very very nice let's uh, get a quick water pumping station going that's generally the most cost effective uh, solution especially in the very beginning i'm gonna place one here this one is going to need us. Uh, it's it's going to need road access. What I usually like to do is grab the small alley here. And we'll just align it perfectly like such. And then I go down to about... Oh, didn't want to do that. Got a little trick. I want to go down to... Actually, let's just get the free form going so we are in control. And I want to create like a little roundabout. There you go. I kind of like doing it like that. Now I just need to grab the water pipe and connect it up. We need uh, poop water dispensing. Uh, the currents are pretty important. If I were to place it here, we'll have poop run into our water pumping station and we're just going to have a bad time generally. So I'll be uh, placing it all the way out here, basically. And it doesn't need any electricity or road access. It's just a poop dispensal unit. Uh, which I'm sure is the correct technical term and I'm just gonna connect this up in a bit of a rough manner now because I don't really have a rope network to uh, run it underneath yeah great oh look at look at this service door so you have to uh, you have a steep cliff you have to maneuver around and you can get poop blasted really hope that's a well-paid union job Next step is we're going to map out a few of our primary arterials throughout the city. Uh, we've already got a small segment here of Robin Street that just continues directly from the bridge. Uh, and we're going to stretch that even further. You might want to decide already now where you're going to place your downtown. It is a pretty important focal point in your city. You can always relocate it, but that's going to be a bit of a hassle. So if you're able to already designate your downtown now... I advise on it because it's a good thing to like build around uh, and basically for Southport we are fortunate enough that I think the downtown should be here in the starting square because I plan on having some pretty major uh, port infrastructure down here probably here as well and just generally in this uh, you know this inlet because I expect more calm waters so having a downtown here seems pretty fitting before I do anything, I'm just gonna drag out our four-lane road uh, for a good long stretch. Let's just nice. Let's just go like this, and we'll just create a bend just to ensure that we have a bit of a change as well. Otherwise, it gets a little boring, and we'll drag this out even further. I'm gonna plant some trees now because that's a bit of a criticism I have of the game. The tree growing mechanic is fun, but it also feels a little gimmicky because it takes forever for big trees to grow. So let's see, we've got oak and we've got birch and we've got a wild green o wild green bush O2 on this map. So I'm gonna grab the oak 
and we're gonna increase the scale and now watch the money here it's so expensive you gotta be uh you gotta be careful i guess is what i'm trying to say because you can just burn through your money planting trees which i would love to but it would be a really short video then Continuing our main arterial, I also want to have one that kind of cuts south here. So I'm going to stretch this out, but then I'm going to delete a segment and create something a little more complicated. Um, pretty much for the sake of complexity. So I've disabled snapping because uh, the road tools in this game are absolutely wonderful to work with. So you don't even feel you need them. And I think I'm just going to go... Actually, we should probably have a little more road at our disposal there you go and now the fun begins trying to create something that is overly complex uh real life city planners love overly complex stuff so this is all for the sake of realism trust me And it looks like a complete mess right now, but as soon as we've got our road services unlocked, we can easily fix this up to uh, make it look great. Now I'm going to map out the basic road layout for much of this inner city and downtown area. And we're going to employ a grid, but instead of having a fully conventional boring grid to just continue throughout, I'm going to create uh, several grids and then, and then stitch them together. So I'll have some grids at odd angles. Uh, and then, you know, creating those and then stitching them together, I find that we actually end up with a pretty organic road uh, layout. Um, it's probably easier to show than explain. So I'll just let me start by dragging... Uh, a main a main road uh, through this area here which will connect to the southern port here and some of the uh, northern parts of the inner city then we're gonna grab our two lane road and we're gonna select the grid mode now if we branch out and then we go down and click we can easily create grid and click again and we can of course do the very f same thing over here we can branch out to our desired area we can just click once more at both ends and we can get our grid drawn out and we can make this one a little smaller than the other one the one over here just to create that that difference basically we can do the very same over here we'll go out to about here And by just connecting up these grids, we'll have a pretty organic looking layout. I know organic and grid is a little weird, but yeah, I hope you guys know what I mean. Something that looks a bit natural. And this is the result of stitching together uh, what is actually one, two, three, four, five, six or seven uh, small individual grid layouts. And 
what you end up with is small random things like Fawn Street having a bit of an odd bump here. Um, we've got Pearl Street and Mabel Street, which are probably better categorized as alleys than actual streets and all sorts of random things that just make it feel a little more natural. And to expand on this, what I'm gonna do now is go through many of these roads and upgrade them to other type of roads to create, uh, you know, a, a bit more diversity in the type of roads that we have. So I'm mainly going to employ the alley to create some smaller ones. Starting up here is a brilliant example, uh, like so. Uh, but we've also got roads uh, within here that uh, are probably more fit as uh, like smaller alleys. I'm also going to use um, the two-lane uh, one-way road to create a one-way system throughout. Could, for instance, have this one out here be one one way, or maybe these are actually a good fit. So let's yeah, let's go with that. I'm just gonna go through add those uh, things to yeah add a bit of randomness Now we are gonna put the port in Southport by mapping out the uh, the port area here south of downtown. And uh, you may think that we are actually doing a lot of pre-planning now. Uh, you definitely don't have to do this, but I haven't done it before. So I'm gonna try it now because the scale of this game is just much different compared to Sid Skylands 1. Everything feels more substantial and bigger, especially like the the buildings uh, you know the service buildings this is the small coal po power plant but it's absolutely massive so i'm just trying to think uh, a bit big here for the ports we are going to do some extensive terraforming just to ensure that we have the uh, the, the same like height throughout that is going to make it easier to create uh, a good port area and what I like to do is just grab as much land as I can before the water physics start messing with me uh, because I'm going to reduce it substantially when I create the uh, the harbor and uh, the piers that we'll be seeing. So we'll start with something like this. Now, unfortunately, we don't have keys yet here in City Skylands 2. I really hope it's something that's going to be uh, added later on to make uh, creating waterfronts and harbors a little easier. Now, I've actually developed a, a little technique I'm going to showcase here to make this a little easier because yeah, like I said, it's super finicky trying to get this to align. So what I'm doing here is I am kind of marking out where I want the, the port edges to be. But instead of terraforming uh, right next to these roads, I'm playing down and then trying to replace them with elevated segments. What I'm going to do instead is just use them as guidelines uh, for my terraforming. Um, because then I find that it's a little easier to actually just get the, the terraforming to, um, you know, work out the way you want when you try to create these custom keys. Uh, and then it's much easier to actually create these roads, as you can hopefully see here. At least the end result is that the, uh, the, the roads actually have very little eleva elevation differences, which is what you want, of course, and they're pretty easy to line up. So, yeah, the final result, as you can see, is, is pretty nice, I think. To uh, wrap up the final design of our port area, I'm just building a pretty basic road layout here. Uh, I'm trying to space out the roads so that we've got plenty of large zoning plots, as I find that generally the bigger industrial assets uh, do look a little nice and seem a bit more fitting in a realistic context than some of the smaller ones. Uh, we are also going to add plenty of parking and, and pathways down here when we get to the zoning and the development of the area. And something I also want to highlight here is that I ensure that there's pretty easy connection through one of the main avenues uh, straight from downtown down here as well. 
Next up is zoning and this is where the magic really happens and we'll actually start growing southport and zoning is also an aspect where you can really really change the look of your city if you use a few uh, key techniques and experiment a bit uh, because it is uh, such a defining step in how your city will actually look uh, because in the end the city is going to really be you know the sum of many parts but the buildings as well uh, really the, uh, in particular the buildings actually uh, the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna grab the uh, north american low density housing and zone that throughout much of the uh, much of the city and then as we move closer to downtown and this area along the port i'm going to uh, go into some specific techniques i'll be using in an attempt to achieve a more realistic look Now I've left out a few areas where I think we're going to be placing some of our first uh, service buildings uh, but also just be making small you know recreational areas and and park landscape uh, so I'm just trying to already now in my mind map out where I want to have you know green spaces because they are pretty important to kind of you know break up the monotony of the of the city and if you go through major cities at least on, on Google Maps you will see that they many of them at least have quite a few parks and green spaces to really uh, add a bit of um, distinctiveness to the city anyways we're moving on to zoning downtown and of course we are going to grab commercial zoning for the purpose of this i'm going to rename these two uh, like main avenues in the city this one i think uh, we're just gonna rename as main street uh, as i mean i think that's the best fit it's is the main entrance point to the city currently and it crosses pretty much through what is going to be the most developed part of town magnolia street ah, it's a little boring how about empire avenue that's yeah that's pretty cool <laughs> We're gonna zone commercial and since this crossing here is the very core of the city uh we're going to up zone it commercial and then we're going to zone alongside the two main avenues here and as we move further away than this area here we are going to uh, zone a little more sparingly so we're not going to zone everything we will have some residential poking through uh, facing this uh, main boulevard to have like a, a transition of sorts uh, we'll do the very same over here we're gonna make sure we enable a good transition from our um, fully commercial zoned areas to residential and this is just to get started eventually we are going to have uh, some uh, residential stuff in here as well especially as we unlock medium density uh, but for now we are starting with a fully commercial base which is uh, pretty common in most uh, smaller american cities they can have pretty hardly defined uh, zoning limitations Something I'm also going to do is I'm going to grab the European low density business and start zoning uh, some of these tiles for this type of, uh, of asset development as well. And the reason I'm doing this, despite trying to achieve a realistic North American look, is that I find that for some of the zoning types in City Skylines 2, uh, low density commercial being one of them, the assets are actually quite generic. They, you know, they're low density shops, uh, gas stations, uh, stuff like that. And they have lots of service parking as well. And, you know, it generally works all right if you also include some of the European stuff. So here I'm going to make sure I have that zoned in because it's, of course, going to increase the diversity of the assets. Because if there's something that at least really hurts me in terms of trying to achieve a realistic look it's when you've got you know identical assets spawning next to each other or like four identical next to each other you know unless it's supposed to be a plant development it just yeah it breaks the realism for me now remember i told you guys i have a uh, special plans for this area this uh, residential area here uh, just north of the port and my idea is that we are going to try and create an area that looks like it's been hit with, uh, you know, 
a lot of issues in recent decades. I'm thinking some white flight due to in industrial and manufacturing jobs moving out or being repurposed to, to other stuff, uh, crime and decay and the likes. Unfortunately, this is actually pretty hard to simulate in Sitch Scanners too because we have low wealth assets, but they don't really look all that low wealth, at least not initially. Something we can do, though, to try and mimic this is to have empty lots. I mean, if this was an area that has been plagued by, uh, you know, uh, personal bankruptcies, uh, crime, other issues, then I think it's pretty likely that we would see uh, people move out, people abandoning their homes uh, with no potential new buyers, maybe. And as a result, we've got some empty lots throughout this area. Uh, where we'll have some some bushes and stuff growing. Unfortunately, we don't really have weeds in City Skylands. I would really have liked that because that is, you know, that's uh, for some reason that's just a clear sign that things are not being maintained, uh, taken care of. We don't have that though, so we are going to have to live without. Uh, one more thing is that as soon as we unlock low density, uh, no, sorry, medium density row housing, which we will uh, in just a few moments when we re hit the first milestone, I'm going to upzone this to uh, row houses because uh, that's going to be a better fit down here, I feel. So there you go. We've got we've got some some empty lots poking through now. I I'm hoping that's going to work. It's a uh, it's not really a concept I've tried before. So you guys are guinea pigs. Industrial zoning is going to be pretty simple. Um, I just want to establish an industrial base uh, here in the city for my economy. So I'm just going to uh, zone that without uh, trying any fancy techniques or anything. Uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to, as we move on with the milestones, I'm going to unlock parking, start adding some parking down here and some paths to kind of detail it up. But for now, it just has to grow and support the, the city with a base of jobs. Are you ready, Mr. Poop Dispenser? Because we're now gonna hit play and see stuff grow. And this is one of the most satisfactory parts of this game, seeing things really start taking shape. And I guess it's kind of interesting that the area that we have designated in like a roleplay fashion as the undesirable area is actually the one that's seeing the most development right now, but yeah, I digress. We've uh, unlocked our first milestone, Tiny Village, giving us a bunch of cash to blow on trees, uh, a development point and some new map tiles. We've also unlocked the Rock Musician Mansion uh, signature building. Uh, this one is unlocked if you reach a certain amount of uh, North American uh, single family houses, so I guess that, that really does make sense. City budget and statistics have been enabled, but most importantly for us, of course, the new roads and stuff are nice, but medium density row housing. So I've just paused the game. We immediately have medium density residential demand, which we can uh, succumb. Is that the right way of saying it? I don't think so. <laughs> which we can uh, satisfy is probably the better term. Ugh. With uh, some medium density row housing. And remember, guys, I told you that I want this area down here to primarily be a row house district uh, so we're just going to up zone all this stuff to row house at least the majority of it and then i can always just down zone a bit if there are a few buildings that i would actually like to continue having as a low density uh, but i think for a proper inner city neighborhood where we are near the port it's one of the older parts of the city uh, row housing is probably a good bet. We're gonna let some of this stay. Uh, maybe we should even keep some of the houses that look less nice. That's a bit rude to say, but I mean, that's the truth, right? Is that a pool? Oh man, that's not gonna work. Come on. We'll keep this one as well. It's pretty basic. We'll keep this one. Uh, trying to uh, rule out houses with pools. I don't think that's going to sell the low income thing. Uh, fully at least. Uh, so maybe this is fine. We are also going to do a bit of a row house uh, zoning up here. This um, neighborhood north of downtown. Which is uh, in, in good conditions basically. Something like that is 
probably fine. We will uh, let the simulation continue and see how it plays out. While we let all this good stuff grow, let's go ahead and spend our first development point buying the advanced road services. This is such an awesome addition to the base game here in City Skylines 2. Uh, and we're of course going to uh, use that to really get, uh, get this mess of an intersection cleaned up a bit. Make it look a little more nice. Uh, let's see, we're remo removing a bunch of this stuff. I don't really want people to cross here. They can... Oh wait, why would you actually... Maybe you'd cross here to be able to cross here. And that's, yeah, remove this crossing, remove this one. We're going to remove traffic lights for most of these junctions. Something like this. Let's see if there are lane math. Uh, left turn here doesn't make much sense. Right turn here doesn't make much sense. Let's see, left turn here makes uh, about zero sense. And uh, let's see, would you ever know? You shouldn't be able to make a right here either. It's a dedicated lane, right? All right, I'll do uh, some very, very quick detailing of this uh, little uh, intersection as well. And if you don't know by now, detailing options in City Skylines 2 is uh, they're very limited right out the gate. So you'll have to get creative with trees and the included pathways in the game. Um, I uh, I mean, I would have liked to have more detailing options such as, you know, the ability to place down the basic props of the game at first. But I have to admit, there's also a feeling of, I don't know, liberation or something in not having to actually worry about that. And just trying to, you know, trying to get creative with other techniques to make the city look realistic, such as advanced zoning techniques and the likes. Uh, so, yeah, definitely um, it's been interesting trying to work around this issue, basically. I'm wondering if we can squeeze in a type of... No, we probably can't, so we'll go for a different bush. There you go, basic stuff. I would like to do a bit of terraforming, adding some additional inland rivers and maybe a lake or two just to make it all a little more interesting. Um, but that's pretty boring to look at, so I'm just going to show you the, the after, I think. And while working on some extra terraforming, we've unlocked Milestone 2, Small Village. And as part of the Small Village Milestone, we've unlocked Medium Density uh, Housing, which is awesome because... It's time to start revamping our downtown a bit. We've also unlocked schools, which we'll of course have to place. Uh, taxation as well, which is really cool in, you know, the feeling of uh, a realistic uh, mayor role. So uh, all very nice. We're going to spend our two development points on parking areas, which is not the most exciting, but it's really going to help achieve a more realistic look for our little city of Southport. Oh yeah, and the water is still filling in, but this is the like initial result of my uh, terraforming. And I, I hope as we expand the city, I'll, I'll add even more. Uh, we've got some, some stuff over here as well, and this is an island. So uh, I think it feels a little natural to kind of segment the inner city on an island of its own. So I'm going to upzone parts of downtown with our medium density housing. We're going to go in here, grab North American medium density, and... One technique I like to use is basically to get rid of duplicate assets by just upzoning them to a different zoning type. So this is a great example. We've got, what, three uh, gas stations right next to each other, which I guess in, a, in an American context, it's not that unrealistic. But yeah, let's, <laughs> let's, let's zone this away. We can get rid of one by zoning as such. Uh, we can get rid of this one by having a different zoning lot here. Let's see if we've got some more stuff. I think this would be a good spot for a a bigger building. And something I try to do is I try to use as many zoning lot sizes as possible. So this is a 3x3, three three, you know, a 4x3, and this is something else entirely. Uh, I do that as a way to avoid asset repetition. It's not completely unavoidable. There are not, you know, enough assets in game to completely avoid it, but... You can, uh, you know, apply a few tricks here and there to kind of mitigate it. Now you can also mix in uh, a few European medium density uh, housing zones 
if you start to you know uh, see too much duplication of your north american ones just be aware that this is a zoning type that's you know it's a little more distinctively european so some of the assets that you will see growing here are gonna stand out a bit uh while some will be you know they'll pass they'll pass okay so we're gonna we're just gonna try you know zone a few and then we'll see how it actually looks and we can always revamp if uh, if it's not the uh, not the desired effect and look at all the activity here where main street crosses empire avenue what cherry street oh man yeah street names get updated if you miss just a little with the streets uh, a bit awkward so we've got a ton of commercial demand, uh, but much of downtown is already commercially zoned. What we can do is start zoning out some commercial uh, in the inner city neighborhoods uh, that aren't strictly part of the downtown core. Uh, you know, adding what, you know, essentially should be small corner shops and the likes. Um, <laughs> they don't necessarily look like corner shops, unfortunately, but that's just how it is, right? And it's primarily going to be alongside some of the main roads that we see cut through the area here. And it's also, it's just going to help diversify the area, make it look a little more interesting by the different zoning types used. We have to zone everything in City Skylines too, so we've got to be, we've got to be smart about it. Now, before we move on, we're going to need to place down some basic services because we really don't have much coverage yet. Um, and this is just to save up a bunch of cash and kind of let the city grow a bit because it's it does take a while before people really start complaining. Uh, but we've got issues with, you know, uh, death care as well as healthcare, uh, where we are reliant on uh, neighboring cities providing those services for us and we don't have a school system established yet either so let's start with a school i mean we're gonna un underfund it of course this is a north american city and there's a good spot here where there is already ample room but that would be right next to the low income area and i mean these people i mean they they don't get good service coverage north american city right uh so oh it's a bit rough sorry i'm gonna move up here and i think i'm going to just place it uh somewhere around here oh yeah this is a nice part of town your kids can walk to school if it were was in america they would walk to school of course you will you'll haul their asses to school in your large uh family suv but I mean, you could have your kids walk to school if uh, if necessary. Uh, let's see if there's an upgrade that makes any sense here. We can't really fit anything, but I think that's fine. It's a pretty small. I mean, it's a it's an inner city school or close to, so it doesn't need all that much space. Uh, but it does, of course, need a bit of decoration. So let's go heavy on these big oaks. They are, or at least they're gonna look big and nice in uh, like 50 years. Yeah. I'm a bit salty about the tree growth mechanics in this game. Now we're of course gonna name this. Uh, let's see, Southport Central Elementary. And we're gonna rename uh, the school as School Street. Because uh, the school is one of the oldest institutions of this uh, of this particular area, as the city expanded, so the, the street was actually named in such a way so that it would support a a the first proper uh, elementary school in uh, Southport. So that's the story. The next big item on our chopping block is gonna be a medical clinic. I uh, want to locate it uh, pretty close to downtown. Uh, maybe Foggy Street, or we've got an area here. It could be like part of a recreational area around these parts here alongside Chester Street. Alternatively, we'll give it its own dedicated, very small street. We, yeah, we could do that. I think that's, uh, it's not a bad idea actually. And then we'll just place it and just see the fit something like this quite nice uh, you can always check if there's like an upgrade that might not you know service wise or simulation wise make sense to add but 
it may just add something visually and i think uh, adding this uh what is this even extension wing oh of course it's an extension wing uh that does really add a, a bit of extra character to uh to the building so we're just gonna go with that and then we'll just let the lane connect here and maybe we'll add uh, a fake cul-de-sac maybe we'll even add in some parking so we've got uh, a medical center here and then we'll just we'll dezone this stuff remove it and we'll just make a bit of park landscaping here just really simple and there we have it uh, where you can get world-class medical treatment as long as you're insured or wealthy. Yeah. All right, moving on. Now, we've uh, unlocked a few new roads, of course. So I think I'm going to upgrade Main Street to this four-lane divided road, uh, which seems a little more substantial and wider. It has a, uh, you know, a, a center here, which is modifying some pavement or whatever it is. So I'm just going to upgrade throughout uh, to make it stand out a little more compared to Empire Avenue. And we're just going to run it all the way out here. Then for this big uh, junction, we are actually not going to do the upgrade because um, this uh, four lane road, you know, the double yellow lines actually are continuous when we uh, do uh, the lane math the correct way. And we're going to break that by upgrading to this. Uh, however, we should probably consider upgrading this to an asymmetrical to get an additional lane here because we've got four lanes actually merging here. So I think this is a pretty good idea. And here we can go for three lanes as well because we've got like an basically an off ramp here of sorts. Uh, but otherwise, we are going to upgrade this segment and maybe not the yeah, maybe not the bridge. Or this oh man this, whoa this yeah okay i i'm gonna have to fix that at some point let's just uh, move somewhere else so i guess by now i can't really escape the fact that we've got an absolutely insane industrial demand here in southport and what better way to satisfy that than by expanding the port of southport so i'm going to cross this straight and start creating an industrial uh, port over here on this island as well uh, it's going to be a bit of a time-lapse built uh, using some of the techniques we've uh, talked about earlier. All right, all right. I know I said I'd do a, you know, a cool port like this one, but it's taking a little too long, and this episode is already gonna be really long. So I just tried uh, something different here uh, for our new industrial area. I'm going to zone this up, add some uh, add some parking lots, and uh, be adding some uh, some pathways, and then yeah, I'm just gonna see if I can make this look a bit nicer. 
we'll go and grab some parking lots oh yeah the basic stable of a healthy american city and then we'll be adding some of these pathways in here just to break it up a bit uh, it is going to remove some zoning tiles but it's going to create a bit of distance as well between uh, some of the industrial buildings which i am hopeful is going to look pretty good then We're doing a little check-in here in downtown Southport and things are starting to look pretty good. We've got a decently uh, diverse set of buildings. Uh, some are a little European in their look, but that's understandable. They are from the European theme. I don't think they are uh, so European that we'll have to remove them though, which is nice. I'm also noticing a few empty spots. Now these are probably zoned, but uh, the zoning type probably, yeah, it doesn't allow for such a slim building. Uh, but we can get some row housing in here though. So I'm going to just go ahead and and find these empty areas and zone in some row housing so that we can really um, not get a super dense look, but you know, a look that's more dense than this at least. And I'm gonna add a bit here just to try and because just gonna try and break up some of these larger um, larger commercial assets we're now ready to place down our next uh line of services which is gonna be fire and police uh, but before we do that i'm going to buy some additional tiles i haven't done this yet because it's not really necessary before you actually need them but i guess we're at the point now where it's uh, more of a why not thing because Buying these will also allow me to bankrupt myself on trees, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Um, like I said, it takes forever for actual forests to grow in this game, uh, so you get a start. You better start placing early on. Ten years later. <laughs> ah it's gonna be a beautiful forest one day look at all the smoke from southport must be a great place to live so crime is starting to become a real issue and we're having our first abandoned houses even here in one of the nicer parts of the city due to high crime so pretty realistic for at least some north american cities but i guess you know I guess I was voted in because I'm tough on crime and stuff, so let's build a police station somewhere uh, so that we can fight a war on drugs or something. Uh, you know, we need to incarcerate some people. It's just a feeling, you know, deep in my stomach. Where are we placing this? Are we placing... Oh, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Out here alongside Main Street, we could do something like that oh yeah we'll do like this let's see if there's ah, the extensions probably not needed uh, we should see the police car start spawning quickly though because we've got a true crime rave throughout the city oh yeah go serve some justice boys we're gonna need a fire station as well and i'm gonna place it somewhere decently close to our industrial sites because that's where we're going to see some fires take place so i'm just gonna i think i'm play, gonna place it here alongside anchor street in the southwestern uh, portion of downtown so now we should have pretty good coverage so i've just spent a bit of time detailing up uh, the uh, industrial area down south here a bit uh, i removed some factories to add some empty areas but I mean, ideally, I'd probably have a few more empty lots down here to kind of uh, showcase or represent that, you know, uh, there's been decades where the amount of industrial jobs has decreased due to outsourcing and, and other aspects. But the city is so dependent on a strong industrial backbone that, I mean, for now, we're... We're gonna keep it as is. I added a bunch of paths in here as well uh, as some parking and 
think it looks it looks all right i'm really i'm really missing some more detailing options here the ability to use some props and whatnot but uh, i think uh, at least from afar it, it looks pretty cool and i think it's it's pretty clear to see that uh it's it's meant to represent a pretty big industrial harbor now we're getting very close to the grand village um milestone which is going to unlock a bunch of nice stuff uh, that's gonna really actually change the city here uh, in the final stretch of this episode but before we get there i want to create sort of a green belt here in this open space we've got so i'm just gonna create uh, a bunch of paths to uh, kind of create like a park area that stretches across multiple lots here so that you've got a yeah just some uh, recreational area basically and uh uh, on the next milestone we're gonna unlock parks so i'll see if i can squeeze in some parks afterwards but i've also got a cool little idea for an alternative city hall that i'd like to share with you guys and that's all gonna unlock at the grand village milestone which is the next one so we'll just uh, build a park here and then i'll get back to you when uh, we unlock the grand village And there you go, we've unlocked Grand Village, unlocking a bunch of cool stuff. We can create districts and name them. Very important in creating an identity for our city. Uh, we can start playing with policies. We've unlocked low end housing and low density offices for zoning. Always nice with more zoning options. It allows us to create more diverse districts. Uh, a bunch of other stuff and a bunch of parks and the taxi depot and so on and so forth. Uh, we're just gonna finish up this park area uh, real real quick down here and then I'm gonna get uh, back to uh, buying some stuff with our new development points because uh, yeah we are gonna get a city hall but it's not actually gonna be the city hall that's included in the game. All right, city hall time. Um, we've got seven development points, so we could actually go for the actual city hall as that would cost five points in total. The issue with this building at this point in time in uh, you know, the lifespan of Southport is that it's a pretty massive structure. It's very nice, but it's huge. So <laughs> I've sort of got an idea that we might be able to use the crematorium as our city hall. <laughs> sure, oh man. There's some form of irony in here, I, I don't know, but let's uh, just let's unlock it and, and try it out. Uh, where is that bugger? In here. I made sure not to use the cemetery because I had this idea, so uh, we'll see how it's going to work out. Of course, it needs to be at a very central location, uh, given the uh, fact that it's City Hall, so we are going to have to tear down uh, an entire downtown block in here to kind of make room for it uh, and then i'm going to do some very basic detailing with some paths and some trees and i think it actually kind of does the job i mean if smoke starts rising from these chimneys it is kind of morbid in a way but yeah i mean politicians could work here as well right um <laughs> We got some new zoning stuff and we've got uh, we, we're gonna see some demand for the rent housing as well so we're gonna start up zoning parts of downtown uh, and then i'm gonna let that grow while i detail up the uh, crematory i mean city hall while i detail up city hall
So while I've let downtown grow and starting to look nice, I've uh, grabbed the uh, signature building I unlocked and placed it out here. And instead of having it act as a mansion, I've renamed it the Museum of Blues because I imagine that Southport has a rich blues history uh, among the uh, working class population here, especially amongst the African Americans that moved to this area. Added a little parking lot and some very basic pathways and uh, yeah, I think that kind of fits the bill. It's uh, very close to uh, Southport Central Elementary, so we've got some pretty old school uh, original buildings here. Also just spiced up the landscaping here at this uh, this big park here. So I'm going to make this a district and, and name it something. Uh, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to add a bunch of districts, give them some names, and then uh, we'll have a checkup afterwards. So a quick tour and uh, maybe a bit of history of all our nice districts here in the south side on this rainy spring day. I called this park area the landing and I'm thinking the story here is that this is where initial settlers landed and yeah, no creativity. They it's called the landing today. Uh, it it does have some you know some residents and some. Um, some 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 workplaces but it's mainly composed of a, a large park area so when people refer to the landing they refer to the park the recreational space uh, more than the few buildings that are actually technically within this uh, within this neighborhood uh, downtown southport is uh, quite a sizable entity uh, and obviously the one with uh, the highest population north of downtown we've got school city I wanted to name it something that, uh, you know, tied into School Street and the South Park Central Elementary because we've already established the story of this area. So School City, I think it sounds pretty unique. The game suggested Blackbird something here, so I just went with Blackbird, pretty unique as well. And we've got Rose Root Creek uh, down here. Then we've got uh, Green Belt Park. I'm not very creative. I'm terribly sorry, but yeah. <laughs> We've got the green belt park here and then uh speaking of creativity here is a south side but i mean south side it si sounds kind of cool right especially for like a rough area uh you know where you know, we've got some gang activity and whatnot it's right next to the port of southport which is this massive area with almost a thousand jobs so um yeah i i'm pretty happy with how how this all turned out and that actually concludes the first installment in my beginner's guide to uh, building realistic cities in City Skylines 2. We wanted to cover starting a city, getting a good like foothold so that you can expand and have a good base. And I'm pretty happy with what we've achieved here. Of course, there's so much more you can do in this game. I mean, we don't even produce our own electricity for our electrical grid. Um, we have pretty basic services. There's there's just a ton of things you can dive into, and we've only reached you know milestone four of like a twenty or something. Um, but we gotta start somewhere and I am of course very open to suggestions on what you guys would like to see more installments of this series covering. Um, guides and tutorials is generally a new thing for me, it's not really something I've done before so very open to feedback as well. But I'm pretty happy with how Southport has uh, started out. The only thing left to do is to uh, shoot some uh, juicy cinematics for you guys and thank you all, I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye.